backstabbed. Sloan Plan Subversive New Political Party. So that's our title that we went with. MP Derek Sloan has announced that he is creating a new political party called the True North Party. And I guess right off the bat, you know, because some people in group chats that I'm in didn't even know that it was called the True North Party. I thought that this was common knowledge. I thought that it was common knowledge that Derek Sloan's new party was going to be called the True North Party. We've known this for like five, six months now. And for five or six months, there have been rumblings behind the scenes. There have been, you know, people getting their ducks in a row to, you know, either, you know, join Derek Sloan's party or just kind of learning about it, debating on whether it's a good idea or not. This has been going on for like five or six months, but it is called the True North Party. Um, I guess I'll just continue here because we should all know that at this point. That hopes to rival the People's Party of Canada in the right wing of Canadian politics. With an election looming in Canada, many wonder how right-wingers can dethrone the Justin Trudeau regime and elect a leader that will preserve our Canadian identity. Such eloquent words. Such eloquent words. What a great writer. What a great author. What a great author, dude. It doesn't take a political expert to understand that the creation of yet another party negatively affects our chances of obtaining our goal of ousting the fake conservatives and consolidating the Canadian right wing. And ultimately, that should be our main goal, right? There's more of like the normie crowd out there that believes that, oh, all these right wingers are all the same. And, you know, some centrist right winger is, you know, just as equal as some, you know, further right wing social conservative. That simply isn't true. These fake conservatives are our main enemy at this point in the game right now. OK, they are the main enemy. All these leftists that are out there, like 70 percent of the Canadian voting population, all of these leftists, whether they're Green Party, NDP or Justin Trudeau liberal, they're never going to change. And the people that do switch over, a very, very minute amount of people, okay? Think about how long the Conservative Party has hovered around 30%. It, like, it's, it's that simple. It's that simple, okay? There's going to be roughly around 30, maybe up to 35% of Canadians that will ever, you know, look at Canadian politics and say, I identify with social conservatism. And that's just the matter of fact. That's just the way it is right now. Of course, you know, down the line, we can change this. Of course, down the line, we can work to, you know, kind of turn people more towards nationalism. But as it stands right now, and even throughout this whole decade of the 2020s, I don't think, I, I really don't think that you're going to see, you know, conservative, con I don't really think that you're going to see conservatives ever get above 35 percent, roughly, obviously. Right. So I, I kind of went on. I kind of went on a little bit of a tangent there. But the point of that is to say that consolidating the right wing should be your goal, because when you have this large, you know, static chunk of the voting population, you need to make sure that they are in line. You need to make sure that they're advocating for the right things, that the right people are in positions of power to influence this voting base. You have to make sure that your voting base is energized. You have to make sure that your voting base understands who their enemy is. There's many things that go into it. And there's no room to have multiple banners and, and, and you know, multiple leaders and multiple messages. There's simply no room for that. There is... No room whatsoever for that type of behavior to be happening in, in the Canadian right wing. We don't have enough people. We don't have enough manpower for that. The only way that we will be successful, the only way that we will win is if people come under one banner, is if people understand that, hey, you can be, you know, whether, and you know, I of course I want everybody to be a social conservative, a nationalist. I want everybody to align with my views 100%, okay? At the end of the day, of course, it's going to be a little bit, there's going to be some gray areas here and there. 
But ultimately, you want to make sure that everybody's going down the same path, right? That's what you want. And what's going on right now in the Canadian right wing is completely antithetical to that notion. So let's just continue here. Sources that contacted Canada First Media say that Derek Sloan is internally polling at 4% in his own riding of Hastings, Lennox, and Addington. And when I was told this, when our source contacted us and told me this, I was a little bit surprised. I was a little bit surprised that it was as low as, as, low as 4%. Now, after, you know, letting it marinate a little bit and thinking about it a little bit more and stuff like that, it makes complete sense, right? When you have a polarizing figure like Derek Sloan in a riding like Hastings, Lennox, and Addington, where a lot of these people are ultimately going to vote along the party lines rather than actually, you know, go for a, a, a certain type of candidate. You know, Derek Sloan is obviously the black sheep when it comes to conservative politicians in this country. I, I was a little bit surprised at first, but then after thinking about it, I'm just like, well, it makes complete sense, you know? Because Derek Sloan himself understands, most likely, right? I think that Derek Sloan understands, and he must understand, that he has no chance of winning his own riding because his behavior is reflecting that. His behavior by announcing his party out west, his behavior by going out west to campaign, when a election could be called on Friday, there's a lot of rumors swirling around right now um, that a election could be called on Friday, as soon as Friday. So why is Derek Sloan all the way out west? Why is he not campaigning in his own riding? Which, um, I'm pretty sure that he said this publicly. I mean, I definitely saw it in some kind of article, I think. But he's planning on running in his own riding again. He's not going to be running in a riding out west. He's planning on running in Lennox or Hastings, Lennox, and Addington. So it makes sense. If you're polling as low as 4%, are you going to focus your time and energy there? Or are you going to go out west and, you know, try and, you know, build up your name recognition, try and make, you know, some kind of splash, right? Try and steal some clout out west where it's a lot more conservative, where people would be a lot more sympathetic to your views, right? And that's what it says here in this article. It, I, I go on to say... For comparison, Maxine Bernie, the leader of the PPC, is polling over 30% in his home riding of Bose and is neck and neck with his CPC with his CPC opponent. And this is this this has been the stats for like almost two years at this point, right? Ever since the 2019 election, Maxine Bernie has always been neck and neck with his CPC opponent. And th this is yet another reason why. You know, of course, it's a more minute reason. Um, but Maxine Bernie has a real chance of winning in this next election coming up here. And Maxine Bernie advocates for an immigration moratorium. OK, Maxine Bernie advocates for zero, four and eight. Right. Maxine Bernie is against many of the social issues that we have an issue with. And if Maxine Bernier has a very good shot of winning his own riding back, of getting back into parliament, and then this new party leader comes out of nowhere and starts to steal the show and starts to, you know, get his own foot in the door. He starts to go out west where the PPC is gaining rapidly in the polls. And he starts to, you know, stick his nose over there. And he starts to steal that spotlight. And then you're looking to who's behind him. The cogs just start turning, right? The cogs start turning. And this is the question that we posed in the article. Why is Derek Sloan attempting to inject himself into the spotlight and disrupt these advancements? You would think, and many of these PPC voters out there, myself included, I've said this on the show before. You know, back when Derek Sloan was officially kicked out of the Conservative Party of Canada. I said this on the show way back then. 
that Derek Sloan, oh, he has to join the PPC. There's no way that he runs as an independent. That's what I said. And I've said that multiple times. And that's what everybody else said. Anybody else with the brain said that. Oh, there's no way that Derek Sloan runs as an independent. Nobody thought that this guy was going to go out and make his own party. You know? Nobody thought that he was capable of being that selfish when it comes down to it. For many reasons, including the ones that we talked about earlier, such as consolidating the right wing up here in Canada. So, you know, I I see that. You see, you hear these things, and it's not looking good for Sloan. I'll continue on in in the article here. I should probably just get through this article, because I want to just talk straight about things. I just want to go bam, 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 and cover all the talking points. So let's 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 get through this article here. Going messy mode with the hair again. Neoconservatives are globalist pawns that have no issue with cancel culture and actively participate in whisper campaigns, slandering real conservatives that are truly right wing and truly Canada first. Whether they know it or not, advocating for liberal ideas that are doused in the vernacular of patriotism is not truly conservative. Real Canada First nationalists and conservatives need to be aware of these attempts to subvert the growing Canada First movement. And of course, the Canada First movement is not just myself, right? It's not just you guys, but it's, it's you know, the PPC Canada First candidates out there like Mark Friesen, like Lorlin Tyler Thompson, like Greg Wycliffe, right? It's the people within various news media that... You know, I've, I shit on a lot of alternative conservative news sources. We do have some guys in there, though, okay? We do have some guys in there. So, you know, it's not all bad. A lot of the articles that get pushed by these sources are pretty bad. But it, but it includes our guys in news media as well. There's lots of different components that make up the Canada First movement, right? Of course, it's you guys out there. It's you guys that watch the show and... Send in super chats and come out to CF Pack and come out to rallies and hang out in the Discord and, you know, interact with us on Instagram and stuff like that. That's what the Canada First movement is. And it grows every single day. You know, behind the scenes, Canada First has been making crazy headway. Canada First, we are stirring the pot. We are making moves behind the scenes. And I'm very, very proud of everybody who's, you know, helped us do so. I'm very proud of everybody that's, you know, worked on that. Uh, Canada First nationalists must be aware of the neoconservative media outlets and their subversive tactics that plague Canadian politics. They help the Justin Trudeau regime by propping up controlled opposition. They promote fake conservatives with weak talking points that subvert the very ideals of conservatism. This has been happening for decades and is one of the main reasons as to why the right wing has failed at preserving our nation. Sources have told Canada First Media that former Conservative Party MP and MPP candidates, so both provincial and federal conservative candidates, along with other subversive actors within news media, have been involved in the creation of Derek Sloan's party. So, MP candidates, MPP candidates, people within news media, right? And on top of this, there were a couple of um, old CP, I think it was CPC, um, MPs from like the early um, early 2010s. I, f- I forget their names. I- I've had their names written down. I was going to include it in the article, but like, you know, they were just kind of there at Sloan's announcement thing. And I forget their names off the top of my head right now. But there was a couple MPs there as well. Some old MPs that are now not in politics. One of these actors is Benjamin B.J. Dichter. And he is a former Conservative Party MP candidate. Um, He ran in Thornhill. I'm pretty sure it was. It was Thornhill. And if you guys were involved in politics or followed conservative politics or just politics in general, 
back in 2015, you guys would have known about LGB Tory. And LGB Tory was a LGBTQ plus advocacy group for conservatives. And they called themselves the Rainbow Conservatives of Canada. And BJ Dichter is the guy. He is the one, along with an, some other founder who isn't as you know public as BJ Dichter. But he brought that to the CPC. He brought that into the Conservative Party of Canada, right? So it goes on here. I go on. I keep, I'm keep. i used to saying that because I cover other articles, you know? I'm used to being like, oh, the post-millennial says, oh, the true north says. But I say, I say, because I have the sources this time. I say, we pose the question in the article, why would an ex-CPC member who founded a LGBTQ plus group within the CPC be behind Slo Sloan's socially conservative party? And if you go onto their Twitter, there's lots of interesting stuff on the LGB Tory Twitter account. Lots of sus things with a certain other news media corporation. Well, not even a news media corporation, just some blog. Some blog that some neocon retards have. Some Zionists have. Lots of odd things go on there with them, too. But if you go to the LGB Tory website, that's the main thing. That's the thing that, you know, I was like, bruh. This is fucked. <laughs> this is fucked. <clears throat> and knowing that Dichter was behind the scenes talking to Sloan, you know, knowing that, knowing the things that I heard, about his involvement within the party, this brand new party called the True North Party, and seeing what his groups advocate for, and knowing about him from from the past, you know, Rance Derrick told me a lot of stuff too. He was extremely helpful in learning about this. Of course, Raging Humanist, he was out there posting stuff about it on Telegram. Go follow him on Telegram, by the way. Raging Humanist had some great things to say. Some, some, not, not about BJ Dichter, some bad things to say about Dichter, but great things about, you know, the article and about what's going on with him. He, he had some very insightful input on this situation as well. And here's some of the things that LGB Tory has promoted. Okay. If you go to the LGB Tory website, they write some articles and they promote some articles and on their Twitter they they write in and 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 you know promote some stuff there too. And here's two titles of articles from their website, okay? Why are gay interracial military wedding is the new normal? And gay imam plans to open Australia's first LGBTQ2 friendly mosque is that socially conservative is this something that we should be backing as nationalists as Canada first nationalists and even if even if you know Derek Sloan had no idea right even if oh you know Derek Sloan had no idea who's influencing him who's influencing his party there's other actors that the Sloan camp is involved with as well that are not good either. There's other actors out there that are not our guys, okay? And this is like the nail in the coffin. Like I said, you know, I was in the Sloan zone, okay? I was in the Sloan zone. I'm a social conservative, right? I'm a Christian. I'm somebody that wants to preserve our nation. I'm somebody that cares about the same things that Derek Sloan was promoting. That You know, I had basically all the same views as Derek Sloan has shown to the public. And then you look behind the scenes and none of this is reflected. None of it is reflected in, in the bones of this party. None of it is, 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 is actually reflected in Sloan behind the scenes. 
And I'm sitting here like, what the hell is going on? Right? I I'm feel I'm feeling like I'm pulling a Donald Trump. We had to figure out what the hell is going on. Because like I said, I was in the Sloan zone. I liked what Derek Sloan was doing. And then it turns out that I think he's in it for the paycheck. I think that he's in it simply to, you know, save his ass politically. I think it's selfish. I think that he's in it for selfish reasons. I think that the people that have surrounded him may have even convinced him to go down this path. They may have convinced him to be selfish, but it's selfish nonetheless, okay? It's selfish nonetheless, whether you were subverted, whether, you know, you have all these Zionists and neocons and centrists and gay LGBT people influencing you. What matters is the decisions that you make, right? That is what matters. It matters what decisions you make politically, where you bring your followers. And creating a new subversive party with bad actors involved in the creation of it is something that is unacceptable, especially at this stage in Canadian politics. We don't have a lot of time right now to, you know, have two parties and split the already splintered vote. We don't have time for that shit. Right now is the time to come together and ultimately put Canada first. Why can't people just put Canada first, okay? How are people out there not getting behind that? How are people like Derek Sloan seriously thinking that, oh, I'm gonna I'm going to lose the I'm gonna lose my seat in this upcoming election. So I need an income. And how do I get an income? You make your own party. Okay? That's how you get an income. You 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 get donations. That's how you make an income. Because Derek Sloan's not going to win. These factions, right? Mask, and I'm gonna kind of take from, from our next paragraph here. These factions that are out there masquerade as these freedom-fighting conservatives that, oh, we're fighting for your freedom, and we're going to talk about not wearing a mask, and, you know, we're going to talk about all these issues that are going to appeal to a certain voter. But they never go all the way. They never take things to their logical conclusion. They never actually tell the full truth. And maybe that's politics. Maybe that's the game, right? Maybe that's just how it is. But that's establishment to me. Not telling the full truth is establishment to me. Not going out there and actively, you know, saying the things that we say. Telling, you know, telling the truth. Talking about, you know, demographics. And talking about absolute free speech. And talking about Bill C-36. Where's all the talk about Bill C-36? And I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to kind of go off on a little tangent here. You know, I'm not even just saying that this is Derek Sloan by himself. He's obviously included into this. But where's all the talk about Bill C-36? Or this brand new anti-online hate speech, you know, commission that we talked about last week. It's out there. It's in the media. And none of these conservatives, these so-called conservatives, will talk about it seriously. Not a single one of them will talk about the full truth behind it. Not a single one of them will actually deploy useful rhetoric surrounding these issues. Why? Why is that? That's what leads you to look at who surrounds these people. That's what leads you to look to, you know, to to look around and and dig around and see who you know, his team is. See who the people who are, you know, getting into his ear and telling him things. Oh, you can't say that. Oh, you can't talk about race. You can't talk about demographics. You can't talk about this. You can't talk about that. There are these so-called conservatives out there that have led a whisper campaign against me, which is very, very funny to me, okay? It's very funny to me how they lead a whisper campaign against me after CF pack. And, you know, you hear these things, you know, of course you hear these things 
And I'm sitting here, I'm just like, obviously it was expected. But these people call themselves conservatives. No, okay? No. You're not a conservative. You're not a nationalist. You're a fucking bitch, okay? You're a bitch. You're a retard. You're gay. That's what you are. You're not a real Canadian. You're not. You're not a real Canadian. If you're going to go down this route of subverting the, you know, the Canadian people, if you're going to go down this route of not telling the full truth, of you know anybody who's further right wing than you, anybody that's more conservative than you, you say, oh, you can't be like that guy. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't say that. Why? Oh, because they're too right wing. There's no such thing as being too right wing, okay? And I'll say that. I'm a right wing nut, okay? Sure, you you can call me far right, okay? Yeah. Guess what? I'm right wing. I am a right wing Canada first nationalist.